1983, RFA football was one of the best programs in New York State. Five to 6,000 fans would come to the stadium on a Friday night to watch their Black Knights play. Then, in 1983, a new tradition was born, one that no one saw coming. Out of nowhere, a Black Knight appeared, riding a Harley and even a horse. The crowd would go crazy whenever he appeared. The best part about it? No one knew who the Knight was. A secret kept by only a few. We sat down to hear his story, and for some, to reveal his identity. Hello, my name is Tom Badalato, class of 1993, RFA football. Wanted to take a few seconds and say how awesome it was to play under the lights on Friday nights. Thousands of fans, packed stadium, the tradition that it carried, uh, the success of the RFA football program. I remember Mr. Jenny as the RFA Black Knight at our football games back in the 80s. What is the history behind the RFA Black Knight? Oh, the history behind the Black Knight. 1983-84 uh, season. That's uh, about 37 years ago. Um, my oldest daughter, Michelle, uh, came home and told my wife that she was going to join the streamers at the RFA marching band. And she met Mr. Geller, the uh, band director, and she told my wife he was very sick and he had no help with the auxiliary squad. So my wife said, let me come down and meet him. And she went down and met Mr. Geller and he asked her for help. She volunteered and she decided to help. They had 42 flags, baton twirlers, streamers, uh, that she had to watch over, teach how to do their, their job. And um, she worked with my daughter, Michelle, and a couple other of my daughter's friends and uh, I started going to the practices with him. And I met Mr. Geller and I mentioned to him, uh, I said, God, RFA's a big school. Uh, I think they had like, I don't know, 1,500 kids in the school. I know we had 120 band members and auxiliary squad. And I said, they don't have a mascot. I said, when I was in high school, my God, we had like 90 kids in four grades and we had a chieftain, uh, our name, school name was the Chieftains, and he rode a horse. And Mr. Geller said, wow, that would be neat. Why don't we run that by Mr. Valeri, the principal? So we did. And Mr. Valeri was there for it. Uh, he talked to Mrs. Calagero, and I believe she worked for the school board, and she okayed it. So we started looking into it. We had to make a costume. We didn't have anything for a black knight. But the only thing we couldn't come up with was an authentic looking helmet. And Mr. Geller decided to order one from a company in Albany. So he ordered a helmet. Uh, we slowly put together a costume over the practice sessions before school started. By the time school started, we had a, a uniform. Uh, helmet came. A lady, Mrs. Geisinger, made a long cape, homemade. Uh, so we had the cape and the I had a leather chest band that I wore over my chest that had the black knight on it. it was from the old uh, the old uniforms they had. I had to reverse it. That was on the back. Um, and then we wanted to know, for, try to figure out how to bring it out to the crowd. Yeah. I worked at Montgomery Wards at the time, and I went in the back, and I got a complete refrigerator box. We painted the box orange, and we put big question marks all over it. So the night of the first game, uh, I went out inside the box. Uh, the, the mothers that assisted my wife walked along with me so I didn't break my neck. Uh, stood it in the middle of the field, right on the 50-yard line, right on the track. And we had a, given a script. Mr. Geller gave a script to the announcer. And he kept asking the people, what's in the black box? What's in the black box? Well, at a certain point, the band, I think, did a drum roll or something, and the women popped the box apart, and there was the Black Knight. So uh, I kind of walked around the crowd. I mean, the horns went off. Everybody was all excited. And uh, I walked down to the end of the stadium where it was an area they used to call by Moe's Shack, and Carl Eilenberg was there, and we were standing around talking, and Larry came up to me, the principal, and said, wow, this is really something. Have you ever ridden a horse? 
And I said, uh, I was born and raised on a farm. Uh, it's been 25 years, but yeah, you know, I was like 40. And uh, he said, if I could have a horse here at halftime, would you ride it? And I said, yeah, yeah. Well, he had a student that lived up on, I believe, Williams Road in Rome, and she had a thoroughbred show horse. And lo and behold, halftime showed up, and that girl come riding in the back gate on that horse. She brought it down in a trailer and uh, introduced me to the horse. I got up on it, and we decided, because she was very spirited, that the owner walked me, and she walked me and the horse down in front of the stadium. And let me tell you, that was probably, I had chills, because it was extremely exciting. Everybody stood up. They were so happy. Also to see the Black Knight and, and what it meant to come out of the, the stadium and, and uh, just get on the field and see the Black Knight roaming the sidelines, cheering us on and, and just being a huge supporter in, in what it uh, embodied of RFA football. And uh, it, it was a great tradition, something that I cherished and uh, very thankful to, to have a, a part of my life. So Everyone anticipated his arrival. You didn't know when he was going to come out, what he was going to do. It was just a really fun time. He would come out on his motorcycle, and I believe a couple of times he even rode out on a horse, if you can believe that. I was lucky enough um, the first year that the Black Knight appeared at RFA Stadium for a football game was my senior year. And I remember us being on the sideline and hearing the crowd go crazy, and we had no idea what was going on, then all of a sudden we look and we see this black knight riding a horse and it just got us pumped up at halftime. And, um, you know, we just carried that into the second half and did very well and, you know, he became kind of a fixture for the next 15 years at RFA Games. Well, that was the first night. Uh, the next week, I believe, was uh, homecoming and uh, the girl said she'd bring the horse back and sure enough, halftime, there she come riding across the practice field with the horse. And she said, this time I want you to do it yourself. And I said, okay. So I started and this horse was just, she was gorgeous. And when she walked, when she pranced with the crowd, she was performing. She went like sideways and she walked down in front. And when we got in front of the stadium at the 50 yard line, the cheerleaders were facing the crowd. They turned around and they saw me and they all started jumping up and down with their pom poms. And the horse took off. Fortunately, I had the reins tied. I laid him down on by the saddle horn, and I grabbed a hold of the horn, and I prayed for about six minutes. Please, God, don't let me fall off. And that horse took me around the track at a full gallop, completely around the track, scared to death. But they thought it was part of the show, and, and, and it was great. But at that point, Mr. Valeri said, that's it. It's too dangerous. It's dangerous for you, and it's dangerous for the crowd. So we have to come up with something else. So that's how we got the Iron Horse, which was one of my good friends at works, uh, 1976 special edition Harley Sportster 1200 CC with straight pipes on it. And that started out as the Black Knight on the Iron Horse. It was the second week of the season and of the 1983-84 season. And that's how we got started. Okay. Number two. Where did the RFA Black Knight costume come from after that? Okay. Like after? Well, we made that original first one. And then we needed uh, new band costume. uniforms. The band needed uniforms badly. Uh, I think they were 35, 45 years old. Uh, they were ripped and torn and horrible. So my wife and I got together. She had an idea with the women that worked with her that we would start holding raffles and uh, Cake bake, uh, you know, bake off some things to raise money and, and get the kids new uniforms. And Mr. Geller ran that by the school board, Mrs. Calagero, and Mrs. Calagero said, hang on, we buy football uniforms and soccer uniforms and uniforms for all the sports teams. I, I don't see any reason why we can't purchase uniforms for our marching band. And somehow she took the ball and Within about three, four months, she had uniforms on order. Her and Mr. Geller got together, and they ordered new uniforms, which were the uh, black with the orange stripe down the leg. You know, black and orange, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uniforms. 
And that's how we got the, the uniforms. And at that time, Mr. Geller ordered me a, a special uniform that would fit me, because obviously I was bigger than a lot of ninth graders. And uh, he ordered, I had a special sash that went down the front, and I had a cape that buttoned onto the back. And that's how we got the new black and orange uniforms. Okay. What was your reason for being the RFA Black Knight? That's interesting. Uh, school spirit, three daughters, one of them in high school, one of them in, uh, coming up into junior high, another one down in grade school. I just thought it would be fun, and I thought it would be almost a patriotic thing to do for the school, a large school like RFA, not having a mascot. I know Cicero North Syracuse and some of those had them, but... I wanted to do something a little different with the Black Knight. And uh, I say when I ran it by Mr. Geller, he okayed it with open arms. And uh, basically it was done for school spirit. Uh, RFA was a big, big school. It had a absolutely wonderful football team with Coach Oak. Uh, they very seldom lost. Uh, we went to the Dome, I think, oh, I can't remember how many years. We used to take four buses of the band uh, and, and the auxiliary squad, 120 kids to the Dome, and I think we went you know, every year for, I don't know, eight, nine years. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm getting old, I don't have that memory, but we went to the Dome a lot, and uh, it was school spirit. It just, when I, when I put that uniform on and walked out in front of the crowd, it just made me feel good inside. And it was, it brought my family together, my uh, daughter in high school, the ones coming up, my little one. Uh, it was a family operation. Enjoyed it. It's awesome. He just added to the excitement of the evening. He got the crowd, the fans, the cheerleaders, the players, everybody hyped up um, to have a great evening. It was such a wonderful time and we have such great memories of those days and a lot of it has to do with Mr. Jenny as the RFA Black Knight. How many years? I think we started in 1983-84 season. Uh, actually started uh, in the 83 fall season. And we went through <clears throat> when my youngest daughter, Heather, graduated in 1997. Uh, Mr. Geller had quit, and we had a different band director. We had a different principal. And uh, <clears throat> they were not as keen as the prior, the prior principal and Mr. Geller. Mr. Geller was you know, driving force and, and the mascot. The new principal and the new uh, band director were really not interested in it. So we kind of backed out. And I should mention that all the years that I was in there, I think starting in probably 1985, uh, the Black Knight rode in the Honor America Days Parade on a Harley Oh, I rode a Harley, I rode a go-kart, I rode pickup trucks, I rode uh, a Suzuki Water Buffalo, I rode a Honda Goldwing. Uh, I rode, I was in the parade every year with a motorcycle, and uh, I think only one or two years the band was with us. But uh, I did that all the way through to 1997 also. That's awesome, too. Um, how did you keep your identity a secret? That was fun. <laughs> the, first year, the first year we it was absolutely totally secret basically the only ones that knew who i was was mr geller my wife my girls and uh, mo in, in mo's shop down there the, the uh, maintenance man he, he took care of the football field and everything uh they had a group of us used to stand uh, and watch the game from the end down there by Moore shack and uh, mr uh Eilenberg, carl Eilenberg was the mayor and, and he knew about it and they had a contest in school uh, to guess who the Black Knight was. Uh, and one of the funniest things that happened to me is one of the nights we were standing there when they were having the contest, and I saw three girls running down the track, and they're screaming, and we know who you are, we know who you are. And I, a 
great, great. And I didn't talk much. I didn't want my, I thought somebody would recognize my voice, but they came up and said, we know who you are. I said, okay, who am I? And all three of them said at the same time, you're Carl Eilenberg. And I said, that's wonderful. Now tell me who's standing next to me. And their faces just dropped because Carl Eilenberg was standing next to me. <laughs> So technically speaking, I don't think we ever did come out. I, I think one time after the second year, I did take my mask off one night and out on the field and they told everybody who I was and I put the mask back on and I did my thing walking around with a band. I went up in the stadium and said hello to my friends, the people that I knew because I worked uh, at Goodyear and I knew a lot of, had a lot of customers and, and friends all at the game. and. None of them knew who I was. I had taken my mask off. The announcer announced me, and they still didn't know who I was. <laughs> so it, it just got out very slow. Uh, a lot of people. There's probably people today to this day don't know. <laughs> how did you reveal being the Black Knight? Like, how did you, how did you um, reveal it to the, to the school? Re really, never did really never did and I say the only ones that knew it was the principal uh, and a few people that I had to see me when I because I used to bring my uniform in over my shoulder and get dressed uh, down in the mechanic shop and, uh, and get dressed after uh, you know to change after and go home uh, it was just a, a very slow word of mouth but people didn't I don't think they paid attention they, they really didn't uh, we didn't have an announcement outcoming or anything. I used to go to all, my wife had banquets for the band every year for all the years she worked with it. We used to go to like the Polish home. Uh, we had banquets all over. The kids would uh, chip in and pay for their meal and Mr. Geller would pass out awards. And we did that every year. And uh, every year the, the kids didn't know what I was. Because again, I, I took the uniform, I'd go in the back, get dressed, come out, do the black night thing, go in the back room, come back out as Mr. Jenny. and. Nobody knew who I was. It was fun. <laughs> Last question. What was your favorite memory as the RFA Black Knight? Just the crowd. It, it was great. The crowd, the kids, the excitement. Uh, being a mascot for a winning team with a great coach. Uh, a great school. Uh, we had a good principal, Mr. Mr. Valeri. Uh, it was just, it was just, everything was good about it. Everything. Uh, the last two years, uh, they got to the point where when I'd walk through, because I'd come out with the marching band, and when the band went off, then I'd go up into the stadium and say hello to all the little kids. The little kids, the five, six, seven, ten-year-olds, uh, would all come up. They'd swarm me like I was uh, Elvis Presley or something. In the last two years, I was even, I had to carry a, a Sharpie pen because I had an autograph adults and children's uh, programs for the football game. <laughs> that was exciting and that made me feel good. Uh, made me feel like I did my job. And uh, if that's the last question, uh, we're doing this in my home. Uh, I have out in my garage the Black Knight wall. My, wife, my daughter and I will shut this off and we'll go out and I'll show you some of the pictures and uh, the remnants of the Black Knight costume that I will keep until the day I die. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jenny, for all your efforts to keep pride at RFA. The Black Knight will never be forgotten.